Welcome to the Bigs, Junior. This is the Science Fiction Rating System, the podcast that aims to rank every science fiction film from one to infinity. My name is Sam Draper, and I am joined as ever by Chris Redding. Hello, good evening. How are you doing, Chris? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. It's good, hot. Good. It's it is hot. hot one. And also, Alex Humphrey. Hey there. How are you, Alex? I'm not bad, yeah. I'm hot, hot, hot as also, well. but, yeah. uh, you know, I can deal with it. I'm ready for this. I enjoyed this week. You did? Yeah, okay. I did. What was that quote from at the beginning there? That was from Real, Real Steel. Was it? Um, when the robot goes into the big leagues, the, the commentator goes, Welcome to the Bigs, Junior. I was hoping you, not that we're talking about it the first way, but I was hoping you were going to say he's serving up the G- Diddy Cappuccino. Uh, which was also in real, that was in Real Steel as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. That was my favourite line from that film. Yeah. But before we get to the films, let's explain what's going on here. Um, every week we take three films and add them to a gigantic list of rankings. You can find at sciencefictionratingsystem.com. It's always up to date to the week before, so you can look at it with no spoilers and uh, think where you'd put the films. And while you do that, we will actually put the films in there because our opinion counts. <laughs> and yeah, by the end of the episode, three more films will be added, and then next week we'll preview three more with some trailers. And the week after that, we'll put them in the list, and you get the idea. It goes on and it goes on. Um, there's normally a theme. This week's theme was giant robots. Um, so we watched Real Steel, kind of like giantish Transformers, yeah. bigger Pacific Big, Rim, yeah. huge, biggest, mm. yeah, yeah. And it's because of Transformers coming out. Is it out yet, Transformers it's, Dark Knight? I think it's out Last today, night, isn't it? Whatever it's, it's out called. today. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, have, um, I have been told that at some point in the new Transformers film, Megatron negotiates with uh, lawyers. Wow. For, a trade, for the Trade Federation, is it? I'm not entirely sure what for, but <laughs> I'm suddenly really interested in seeing that film. Merchandising about- rights. Gun control laws. <laughs> Probably it's merchandising rights. <laughs> <laughs> Also, Stanley Tucci, who was, I reckon. you know, Stanley Tucci we just watched was in this film. Um, oh, yeah. He's in this new one as well, but he's playing Merlin. Oh, <laughs> it sounds okay. ridiculous. So, yeah, I'm not, quite intrigued by it. Do they just accept it? I think so. I don't think there's any sort of link. I think he's just playing two characters. But anyway, last wow. night's for the future. Um, for now, let's discuss the original Transformers. Well, not the original. Well, the original was not uh, original. <laughs> <laughs> Far better film, but um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, it's their war on our world. It's Transformers from 2007, directed by Michael Bay and uh, written by Roberto Orci and Alex Kurtzman. Yeah, who were really good, they made some really good TV shows, shockingly. Yeah, but if you, especially Kurtzman, if you look up his um credits, Star Trek Into Darkness, not a good film. Okay, yeah. Amazing Spider-Man 2, not a good film. Okay. But Fringe, Fringe, amazing TV series, come on. Cowboys and Aliens? Okay, right, yeah, those are more worse. <laughs> those are more bad than good. Fringe, they did Fringe and Sleepy Hollow, both of which I think are brilliant, but right, yeah, okay. okay. They're bad on films, good on TV, maybe. He also co Maybe that's the problem. The New Mummy as well, and he directed that Oh, film. okay, yeah. okay. This is worse. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> let's go back to 2007. So, Transformers, we'd all seen this before, I believe, yep? Yep. Yep. Uh, Chris... As a Transformers sceptic among us, at least about the toys, about the toys, uh, what did you think of Transformers on this rewatch? Um, it's silly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> very silly. Yeah. Um, I, it's got one of them things where once you've like seen seen it once, like of just the spectacle of things just hitting each other. Yeah. Um, that's that's kind of all you'd see it for. Yeah. I can't read. There's no. There's literally no other reason to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I can agree with that. <laughs> I don't I mean, think the hitting is too good, really. It. No, the hitting is it, aren't even that good. No, um, it's no. too. The way the they tried to tempt you in there with other things like, I don't know, exotic locations, yeah. um, Megan Fox leaning um, over things. Yeah, <laughs> uh, just you know, military hardware. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in the end, it's garbage. Yep. Uh, um, yeah. Alex, can you agree with that? <laughs> no, no, it's utter garbage. I fucking hated this film. I thought it was terrible. I remember <laughs> seeing it at the cinema and thinking, not much of it. Um, 
but this time, oh, it was so bad. And I can't, I can't understand how boring it is. It's so boring yeah, as well. Yeah. And it, the bit when you're watching it, that bit about one hour in, when all the Transformers show up yeah. and they introduce them all, that should have been the start of the film. Also, when they all, that's when they let all land, and they all just happen to land right near a. Uh... Is it a G- GMC? Is that the brand of vehicle? Uh, <laughs> they're, yeah, they're all just yeah. right next to one of those to transform yeah. into. No, um, but I mean, reading up about it, it sounds like it could never have been a good film. Like, the release date was set without a script or a cast yeah. of this film. Yeah. And just reading up, like, how the script was put together, it was just Steven Spielberg putting his oar in, and then yeah. Michael Bay said he didn't want to do it because it was, uh, where is it? I've written it down. A stupid toy movie. Yeah. Um, but then he wanted to work with Spielberg, so he was like, "Yeah, cool. Uh, I want to put a lot of military stuff in it." And it just, I just think it's just a mess and a, like a money making mess as well. Completely. Yeah. And it's just a bit offensive. I did really like, as we discussed in the in the previous show, I really like Transformers. I think the cartoon was good. Uh, the animated film was good. It's a good concept. I don't know how you can muck up that concept, but he really does muck that concept up. I don't know really how, but he just kind of. Manages I think just to mess it all up, top to bottom on every level. I mean, I also hated it. The one thing I'll say positive about it is that I think, at the very core of it, the idea that there's been a transformer here for years, and they go too far with saying that basically everything we've ever done is because we got it off Megatron. Yeah, oh god, yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah. But the idea that like it's been frozen and we got something from it, and they're coming back to get you know that thing, the yeah. robot that. In itself, doesn't seem like a bad idea to me. You know, that's a, you know, it's quite rote and predictable, yeah. but it's a quite, yeah. a, a, you know, a core good concept. It's just, yeah, everything above that, like from every character in it, who it, mm. at all unbearable. Um, oh god, yeah. yeah, all the military stuff is completely just worthless. The script yeah. is, like, the script is very. I don't know, like, just on a next level of awful, isn't it? <laughs> it yeah. really is. No, um, Sheila Bush's character is just so annoying. Just like so smug, yeah, and like you know, like Chris always says about like sass talk. That it's all just this kind of like really like, oh, 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 like these. Yeah, it's all yeah. sass talk, and then even all the yeah. bloody Transformers are sass talk, which is even more annoying. Like, where have they learned how to? Why are they talking like that? Why do Except they all speak all the like that? Talk, which is weird. Yeah, as well. <laughs> it's kind of you get you get the uh, you get the impression that like in the voiceover booth. People are going. Oh, I'll go. I'll try like a Southern States hick <laughs> voice for yeah, this one, yeah. Yeah. Michael. And they're like, "Yeah, yeah. go and try it out." Oh, yeah. that's brilliant! Do that. Do yeah. that for the next two hours. They've all got to be yeah. a stereotype, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, the um, best. The best original idea is at the beginning when um, Bumblebee can't talk and he uses the speaks through the radio. That's actually like a, a good gimmick. It's quite kind of that's all reasonably well done, I think. Yeah. And then that's ruined as well when he can... Because that just seems like a, a weird, stupid stupidness when they're like, oh, yeah, his voice is broken. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, his voice works now. Like Also, his voice is broken, but he can still like change to a different car if he feels like it. When he you know, when he yeah. becomes yeah. the new Camaro because yeah. they're like, oh, I'm better or whatever. And yeah. There's no consistency, really, with the, how the Transformers transform in the way that like some of them can have a person in them, can't they? And yeah. that's a bit weird. Like, that kind well, of... <laughs> it's, a, it's that liquid that kind of liquid metal thing because I again I read yeah. no transformation in that film is ever the same which is completely against what the yeah, Transformer totally. toys were they only had one way you did it and that was yeah. it and yeah Michael Bay said uh, I just didn't want to make the boxy characters it's boring and it would look fake by adding more doodads <laughs> and stuff on the robots more oh, car God. parts you can just make it more real and they spent like hours and hours, like each frame of that, because it's all spinning. And mo- but it just looks shit. It, just, it looks like those liquid monsters in um, Edge of Tomorrow. They looked a bit like that, but not as good, I thought. It makes it just kind of absolutely like ridiculous that why would these things even like hang out as cars? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. If that can be, if it can be a giant scorpion monster, yeah, why is it bothering to be a car? But also the transformations when they do it, like, why does every bit need to rotate twenty times? You know, there's no, yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't even look very good. I don't think it looks no, just I, no, no, it doesn't look good. I think they thought it looked good, and it doesn't look good. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of hard to follow, isn't it? I think you kind of don't, you can't keep track of what's going on really at some times, and it's so bloody it loud, is, though, well. isn't it? It's just like just bamboo, yeah. bamboo, yeah. yeah. So yeah, just, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and it sounds like a trash compactor, like the whole thing, just when they start hitting each other. Uh, yeah, 
John Turturro's uh, John Turturro's all right. His ridiculous character is quite good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's all right. Yeah, um, he's he's kind of sleazy um, and funny. Um, Sheila Boff's dad, I can't remember his name. He's a good character actor. Yeah, um, yeah, he does all right. Although that that whole relationship with his parents is very strange as well. Yeah. You know, they're yeah. cl- clearly very rich, making soap for a car. Like, go, oh, you got a Porsche? No, you haven't. Lol. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's very dickish. <laughs> uh, yeah, and and Megan Fox, I mean, the most blatant eye candy of all time. She has no real role in the film, does she at all? No. And her relationship with Sheila Booth is she's, ridiculous. I've seen her do other stuff, and she's actually quite. I think she's very smart, and she's very with it, and. Yeah, she even yeah. Got, no, she's I think quite she a good actress. Yeah. Is it in the end because she dissed Michael Bay, didn't she? Yeah, she really bad mouthed it after the second one, yeah. I think, or the third one. She got um, thrown off. Yeah, um, she did some commercials. You... I think I saw for, <coughs> for and they were hilarious yeah. for like laptops. It was great yeah. um, because they were selling the whole thing of her being stupid, and she was a scientist in it. Yeah, so right. <laughs> but yeah, do any of you know who the voice of Megatron was? Yeah, it's, it's the old. Vo- it's, um, yeah, it's a- no uh, Hugo Weaving. Hugo Weaving. Yeah. yeah. And did you read about what he said about this? No. He said it was one of the only things I've ever done where I had no knowledge of it. I didn't care about it. I didn't think about it. <laughs> and he's basically there is footage of him in the recording thing, and he says on the lines, he's like, I don't even know what I'm saying like that. <laughs> and he's been hugely public. He basically just got the. I think they wanted him. They wanted the original guy to come yeah. back and he couldn't and then they went I think Michael Bay went for him and was like I want you and I think he did it all out in a in a booth out in probably Australia somewhere no interaction with Michael Bay never met him never met anyone <laughs> just went in there read the lines and he said he just took the money and he never thought about it again he said he actually feels quite guilty it's the only film where he's ever done that and he actually feels a bit kind of crappy about that um, but yeah um, that didn't go down too it, well <laughs> he's in the sequel though, isn't he well, yeah, they obviously, well, I don't know. They obviously got him back then. That's pretty weird. His Maybe agent just I'm... keeps hooking him up because it's obviously huge money as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he doesn't really do much in this film, does he, really, other than... Um... Not really. Well, the main baddie is really that CD deck thing. That yeah. weird little oh, thing. That's the so biggest... so annoying. <laughs> but he's like the mastermind villain. And why isn't it Soundwave? I don't really understand. I know, I know, why wasn't yeah. that Soundwave? That thing is so annoying. Mm. Well, you know when um, when he gets out of Air Force One, does that like pretend? Yeah, like, like walks or like, yeah. oh, I'm not. Don't look at me. Like, what, it makes no sense. Why are you doing this? <laughs> yeah, no, no. He's like the the basically the mastermind of the whole thing. I have worked out this time. It's You're very right. Odd. Yeah. Mm. What do you think his name is? Do you know his name? No. No, not me. CD I mean, Deck. You get um, CD Atron. Star screams in it. That's a classic one, isn't it? Um... That's probably the coolest uh, one, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Yeah. I like the... um, Something you'd want to be. The police car when it's got to enslave and whatever on the side of it instead of protect and serve. That's pretty cool. It's mental. Um, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, dear. And then Devastator turns up and it's just... It's just a mess. Yeah. And they don't seem to... Which one, sorry? Blackout, is it? Big helicopter one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. Also, when Jazz dies, Optimus Prime doesn't seem yeah. that bothered about it. They're just like, "Oh, he didn't make it," and he's like, "Oh, poor Jazz. Oh well, we made some new friends, so well done us." Um, <laughs> it's like yeah. a really weird throwaway ending. Like it goes so quick at the end, and Jazz is such a huge character. Apparently, like Optimus Prime is a bit of a dick in all of these. Um, really? Like I saw um, a clip in one of the films. Spoilers if you want to watch the rest of them. You don't. They're awful. Um, <laughs> Me- like he defeats Megatron Megatron is like oh look you know this is all stupid let's just go over this we don't need to do this anymore and then Optimus Prime just just like bl- blows his head off the big gun oh. and just shoots him in the head <laughs> okay. and apparently the new one I think he's evil in the new one he's a bad guy in the new one Optimus Prime what yeah, apparently. so they hadn't kind of crapped all over childhood dreams enough they decided to make Optimus Prime the baddie is that what yeah. you're saying but Megatron <laughs> does talk to lawyers so I'm I'm tempted at that new one it sounds absolutely terrible also, maybe he's getting um, a, uh, a what's it? One of those things, you know, where you can't go near someone. You know, maybe he's getting one of them on Optimus. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah a, restraining order. Yeah, restraining, yeah, restraining order. order. Yeah. <laughs> so, answer me this, right? Yeah. So, when the these robots are having the war, like yes. thousands of years ago, yeah, did they appear differently? Because obviously, he didn't have the parts of a truck at that point because he hadn't 
found the truck and become yeah, the truck. Yeah, they must have looked completely different. So all, yeah, so all I, these entities were different back yeah. in the day. Well, I think the idea is that they're like the robot, you know, and they stood up as robots with the swords and stuff. That's how yeah. they look on their own planet. Um, okay. And that when they came back before... I'm sure he rides a, di- a, a dragon at one point, and they, they sort of <laughs> say that's why dragons are in myths, because... What? Um, what? Yeah, honestly, it, I think it's the third or fourth when he uh, I was just trying to oh ride a dragon around. Oh, my God. Okay, <laughs> yeah. But what I'm saying is, like, his knee joint is a wheel from a truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and yeah. that only came about when he saw a truck when he was in on Earth, right? That's true. They don't, yeah. really, they don't really show the old fight, do they? No. They they, they mention it at the start, don't they? they, they you don't see it, do you? They, they definitely no, I think you see like the head of of a uh, yeah of uh, one of the bad guy, the bad guy, don't you? Megatron. Yeah. Mm. But his um, his his face isn't. It doesn't really change. He doesn't have a like a, a, a other version of himself, does he? He's just one? like a, no. He's just got a gun for an arm, and he's yeah. like a little blob. Yeah, he doesn't have. <laughs> he doesn't hide as anything, does he? That must be why they caught him. Yeah. <laughs> It's just, it's just stupid. It yeah. is. Yeah. I mean, I yes. think it's quite telling what you're saying, Alex, that it was conceived without a plot and stuff like that, because it does seem yeah. like, oh, it'd be cool to have this, it'd be cool to have that, let's show it on the film. But, I mean, as a money-making exercise, on paper it sounds fantastic. Like, literally. Yeah. Yeah. We've got oh, this yeah. thing which is based on toys. All the people who had these toys are coming into, like, their 20s, 30s. Yeah. Lex make seven hundred million dollars. Mm. Yeah, and then yeah. keep making it. Mm. Um, yeah, well, yeah. So finally, Times. actually, got two films. Yeah. yeah, have either of you seen any of the sequels? I've seen the second yeah, I've one. I've seen a few. I've seen remember. the one where they introduce Rosie Huntington Whiteley. Right. And are they worse? Because I've read them much of, worse. It gets even worse. It gets yeah. even yeah. more yeah. sexist. I can't remember like, anything really about the second one at all. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And he's, at that point, yeah, it's so it's really sick, it, yeah, and racist as well. Like it's yeah, mental. no, there's those there those two aren't there in the second one. There are these two like, like kind two, of cars, like, and they're all like kids. yo man, yo yo, like they're, they're all, it's all like done like that. Yeah, it's really yeah, yeah, it is yeah a they're bit, all I think it, street. Yeah, I think it did get in, <laughs> in trouble for those characters um, deliberately. Yeah. This one was quite racist. Those two Spanish soldiers, and they were like, "No, we talk mm. English, man." It was yeah, all a bit weird, wasn't it? Yeah, that was really weird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, one more point about the new film. Uh, Anthony Hopkins wears Hitler's watch in that film, <laughs> and Hitler's watch what? is a transformer. Sorry, what? Hitler's yeah. watch. Hitler's watch is a transformer, and Anthony Hopkins is wearing Did it. Hitler, no. I think so. Yeah. I mean, I think the new film. Basically, again, spoilers. Um, do you remember Unicron from the eighties film, where the, the planet yeah. the people basically Earth is Unicron, and okay. everything we've ever done, everything ev- we'll ever do, it's do all they control Hitler through his watch? Then is they can, yeah, they control everything, everything bad right. or good that ever happened. It was them. Yeah. I think they introduced what? that idea in one of the sequels I've seen, where they are like a watch or something, and they're like causing pain to the person to make them do things. Right, okay, yeah. It sounds like, like someone's fever dream, oh. just some kind of ramblings does, on, written down on the... Yeah. And Hitler's watch is in it, and it's a Transformer, yeah. and there's Merlin. <laughs> yeah, and Merlin, <laughs> and, yeah. And a it's dragon. Watch. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. no, it's I, I am really tempted. I think... I, I do want to quite see this film, because this Kill all the Jews. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. And apparently Steve Buscemi's in the new one as well. It's like the head of like the the anti auto bot defense force or something. Oh it sounds ridiculous. God. It sounds absolutely insane. But the guy, the guy who's like the special special behind, he's like a an agent. He's like weird. Um, do you know the one I mean? He's like the, the John Turturro. Main bad the John guy. Turturro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the head of yeah. sector, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah. He's really he character. He becomes a much bigger part in the later films. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I think he's in the new one. Oh, also, uh, Sh- uh, Sean the Beef's in the new one. Oh. It's a cameo. But all it is, you know, on this film in eBay, is an eBay picture. That yeah. silly picture of him. That's that's framed, apparently, <laughs> on the wall in the new film. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't sound like the best thing ever. I can't wait to do <laughs> reviewing this. Yeah. That's almost the last yeah. night. Right, we okay. To, let's, yeah. uh, we need to get forward ten years. Time travel so we can review this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
let's uh, maybe we can make an exception and make it the first uh, current release we'll do because we know it's going to be awful <laughs> anyway let's rate this um, Alex where do you want to put this in the list literally only one above Scanner Darkly so right at the bottom apart from Scanner Darkly Chris yes I think so below Scanner Darkly but I'll take above it you, you two win We've got to think about Scanner Darkly. Yeah, a... I, still, what, I think Chris summed it up because Scanner Darkly is pretentious and bad. Transformers wasn't pretentious; it was just bad. What made it that's worse true. was it's, it's shitting on kind of my childhood memories. So that's why yeah. it's worse than Divergence because Divergence was a money making thing as well. But this is worse. Uh, yeah. But it's not pretentious. We need you need to have that combination: pretentious and badly made uh, to get right at the bottom for me. So yeah, yeah, Fair that's enough. my reasoning. Fair enough. Well, thirty-three. We've done it, so we don't have to do it again. Yeah, I mean, we do have to watch four sequels eventually. (laughs) Rising to six. I think that no, that was a peace offering. We just did that. We don't have to. We don't have to go down that road. Fair enough. (laughs) Um, Okay, we'll have a quick break and come back with our second film, Real Steel. Our second film, which is Real Steel, directed by Sean Levy. Yeah, yeah. Um, who, again, not a great resume. <laughs> and no. uh, four episodes of Stranger Things, though. Oh, really? Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. But then bad films again. Yeah, bad films. Films. <laughs> to be honest, so you say resu- bad resume, it's like fucking hell. Take any of this shit, wouldn't you? <laughs> um, Arrival Arrival Oh did you do Arrival? Produ- produced it Oh produced it Yeah I think yeah. he produces quite a lot doesn't he He's quite a yeah. Um, yeah and the screenplay by John Gatins And it's from a short story isn't it Another uh, I think just called Steel yeah. um, Right I'm going to go first in this one Go for it I was really looking forward to this And I was I was sold a pup <laughs> in, that, in that trailer yeah. yeah, there is not a child. There is a child. Well, he's not there. For I very told long. you. No, 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 no. I said to you, be. I said at the end of the last episode, you can go around. I said, Sam, just be careful. There's a kid in this film. <laughs> I know you're going to hate the child bit. But just try and ignore right. that. Just be concentrate careful, on the there's robots. There's a kid in the film. Yeah, okay. that's well, what I've, I said. I I've definitely forgotten said that. that. Okay. And I, maybe, I, maybe I could have ignored him if he didn't dance repeatedly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Probably have more lines than any other character in the film. Mm. If if the whole film was just dreadful, absolutely dreadful. No, I don't agree. I I, I the story I was that, so predictable. The shite we've seen like this is not dreadful. It does. It is dreadful. This is uh, this is one of the worst we've seen for me. Like no the fact way. That from the very first shot, you know exactly what's going to happen for the entire film, don't you? Really. Especially when he goes to court, he's like, "Oh, well, you kind of know you. that anyway because it's a boxing film, and yeah, exactly. and every boxing film is the same." Yeah, it uses well, okay. all the tropes yeah, of the make... genre. But that doesn't excuse it. It's still a predictable. Well, I'm just story saying that boring. argument as predictability is, yeah. is is kind of I, that's the explanation of that. Is yeah. boxing films are all the same? Okay, Every fair enough. Boxing sports film is the same. Well, that's fair enough. Yeah. I don't I don't know any boxing films, so that would explain <laughs> that as well. <laughs> Without robots, and uh, yeah, so I didn't like that. Um, I don't think the robots are very good. What? Um, oh. I'm sorry, I didn't. They I didn't enjoy the shit them. out of you, mate. <laughs> I, I, I just didn't. I, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and to top it all off, there's a child dancing with a robot repeatedly throughout Huge it, action, which is though. just unbearable. Yeah. Huge Jackman's no, all right, I... but oh. and everyone's everyone shouts in this film a lot. There's an awful lot of shouting going on. Don't like shouting. Calm down. <laughs> Everyone he meets shouts at him. When he goes to fight the punk dude in the first battle, yeah. he's shouting at him. That kid you... would not be so ballsy around people like that. <laughs> no, that's true. Do you know? Do you know? You know the kingpin at the zoo. Do you know who that is? No. That's the that's the writer of the script. 
Oh that wow! Guy. Yeah, yeah. That John Gattins plays the kingpin guy at the so. zoo. The bloke. Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. That's yeah. So he gave himself a a reason. Well, I don't know. He gave himself a weird role, but yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll let you speak in a minute. But uh, first of all, one more thing: when the kid challenges Zeus to the fight, and his yeah. voice is like breaking, and he's like screaming. Oh, I love that bit. I like literally had to hide my eyes. It was so oh, embarrassing. It was I love that absolutely bit. dreadful. No, I love that half, bit. Yeah, I mean it's yeah, the emotions it's really, are all there. It's yeah, it was great. It's yeah, yeah. But before, can I ask you one question? Each one question. What's your thought on ET, Chris? You like ET, don't you? Yeah, I love ET. Alex, yeah, I like ET. Yeah, I like ET. That's, too. That's, that's it. I think I cannot fucking stand ET. And I think it's for because the same the reasons. Kids. Because the kids well, screaming. Not not only kids screaming, but screaming just like, kids. Yeah, yeah, and like just mawkish kids. sentimentality. I just don't like it. Not interested. I think the problem here was that you hate boxing, you hate children, <laughs> and the robots weren't enough to counter the hate of boxing and children. I suppose so, yeah. Let's be more positive. So, uh, Alex... Um... Well, I love this film. I saw it at the cinema and I thought it was pretty good. And watching it again, I thought it was really good. Um, I don't mind. I mean, I completely... I'm um, with Chris. You know exactly what the plot's going to be. It has all the tropes of a boxing film in the the little guy rising to the top, but it has all the tropes Helped of Helped out a, by an old guy who used to be the best. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then it has all the tropes of a family drama with the whole, you know, you abandoned me. I don't want your kid. Get out of here. I love you, really. All of those. And it's cheesy as hell, but I think it's good that it's cheesy as hell. And I think that the robot fighting just makes it better. I think all the robot... I think the robot fights look brilliant. I love that there's a lot of robot fighting in it. I think that the fact they use real robots, it's some CGI, but they made a model of every single one of them. There's a real kind of version. Um, and, yeah, it, it's, it's cheesy as hell in the end when he's actually fighting the robot. But ironically, I think that's actually like more like the story because there was a um, an episode of A Twilight Zone um, huh. called Steel that was written by um, Richard... Um, Matheson, who wrote I Am Legend and Jewel. And the plot of it is that there's robot boxing and they go along with this robot boxer. It's someone quite famous in it. Who is it? It is Lee Marvin. They go along, okay. but the robots the robot's broken and they want to win the money. So Lee Marvin gets inside the suit and fights yeah. a robot himself. And everyone boos and says, Oh, you're rubbish, you only just lasted around. And he takes the money, but the whole point is that it was a human fighting the robot in the end. Do you know what I mean? So the whole yeah. silly thing in the end where it's him doing the moves, um, you know, yeah. I, I, quite, I quite liked how ambiguous it was whether the robot was, you know, sentient or not. I liked the ambiguity of that. I think they never really went one way or the other with it. I, I don't think know that, nice. though, that if he is sentient, then, like, he's the most pathetic and sad, like, <laughs> enslaved creature of all time who, like, doesn't rise up and he basically <laughs> just... Goes and gets beaten up for his for his little oh, mastermind the irony. human. Oh, yeah. oh, the irony! Um, He's the only robot with sentience, <laughs> and that's the only one that they ever they yeah. ever created. Yeah, but I like it. I think it's uh, great. Chris, you like it as well? Yeah, I liked it. I enjoyed it. I think it's a just you know it, I like the robots. They're cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, and you do. I do like an underdog story. Right. They don't um, fight much, do they? There's loads of fighting in it. And it's also, all, all the fights just, just like turn into one getting trapped in the corner, then it's being punched in the face repeatedly. Is this based or in the or belly? on that game, you know, where it's yeah. like a board game where the robots hit each other? Oh, uh, Rock and uh, Sock'em, is that? What's yeah. That? Yeah. I think there's some allusions to that. I think like some of the moves and stuff are alluding to that. They didn't. They weren't unaware of that. Some of them where they're just literally like, poof, 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 like yeah. left, right, left, right type thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love the uh, like what's the, the Japanese guy and the weird Russian woman. I love them; they're great as well. It's so ridiculous. Well, he he drives his with two joysticks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he gets in the ring and he's like trying to fight it. Yeah, that's great. I love that. <sighs> the, I admit the robot dancing bit is really annoying. That I'd forgotten that existed. That is naff as hell. That yeah, fair enough. Do you know what would be a much better robot boxing film? Where that the film basically starts with that robot. There's no humans involved, and he's he's like Mickey Rourke in the wrestler, <laughs> and the robot is just like really <laughs> fucked up, and he has to get himself back on the scene. The humans yeah. are involved, and they're just like really dismissive of humans, and you know, 
that would be great. They're just like serving drinks to the robots and stuff like that, and they're like the, the, all the like yeah. servants and underclass, and yeah. the robots are the main one. If I just remake the rest of with robots, that would probably be yeah. a good You film. could probably get, what's it to do that? The guy did District... Um, District Nine, he'd probably take that as a plot because you, you could do it as a massive <laughs> analogy can use all the for racism. They use in every film, yeah. <laughs> Get Chappie yeah. in there, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chappie Two, the wrestler. Chappie Two. Uh, Chappie. <laughs> Chappie's more annoying. Yeah, Chappie's also seen, very annoying. I haven't yeah. seen Chappie. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, have you got anything else to say on this? I just not really. I enjoyed it. I mean, the story's it's. You ticked along very nicely. I think I don't. I don't have the problem with kids like you have. Problem with kids. It's not just the kids though. It's also yeah. the whole story. Like the whole Hugh Jackman's arc's really boring. The, the idea that woman's put up with him for so long. The the, the um, you know, who owns a place Bailey. whose father was his thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She'd be just be sick of him. He's he's a mess. Like I did. I, I the still quite at the start when he's like a real down out loser, down out loser. But it just oh, it just didn't go anywhere. Anyway, also he looked really fat. And like not in like a <laughs> in like a I, he shouldn't be able to box at all sort of way. It's because you're used to the Wolverine Hugh Jackman, which is like ridiculously yeah, yeah tall. I like as well the fact that it's in the future, but not much in the fi- future. It's 2020, and he well, I, reading about it, Sean Levy said he did it deliberately because he didn't want it to be like massively far off and you to not recognise stuff. But yeah. there's just little subtle nods like the phone and their Xbox laptops 720. Did you see that? No, no, I didn't see it. That's as an, ad, as an advert for the Xbox 720. They <laughs> got that advert. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're back to one, for God's sake. Yeah. How many heads <laughs> that got to be? <laughs> no, I like that. I like that they've not gone too stupid with it. it. It does seem like a realistic concept. I would totally watch... Well, Robot Wars is pretty cool, but just a bit naff. If Robot Wars was better, it would be this. Basically. I found a video today. I put it on my Facebook of the Japanese version of Robot Wars. Did you see it? No, no. No. Like, go on my Facebook. It's the Japanese robot. Yeah. Like so they set them up in like this little sumo ring. Yeah. They're only tiny, they're like the size of a toaster. And then the guys step back and it's like AI and they fucking go mad. They whiz around. <laughs> wow. And it like this one whizzes behind and like kicks another one out the out the ring straight away. <laughs> it's like, okay. Like in a second, one second. Like, I have to watch that. Ridiculous. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Cool, uh, nice. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I'd rather watch that than this. Um, mm. I think you're wrong, but anyway, I think we we've knocked on the head what your problem with with this was. Is you're not a fan of that. I mean, I don't mind boxing films. I don't like sport films. I think boxing films are fine. I quite like Rocky and Rocky Balboa. I'm all right with that as a narrative. It's I guess it's like ridiculous bit... how boxing films are all the same, isn't it? Like, they, yeah, really, really the same. Yeah, but I like beat 'em up games, so probably I <laughs> pretty much yeah, the sort of beat but... 'em up. I would literally rather watch the Dead or Alive film than watch this again. Have you seen the Dead or Alive film? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I like the Dead or Alive film. It's not great, but it's a lot better than this. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Worst okay. effects. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, uh, Chris, you can go first. Where would you put this in the list? I would put this... Um, probably... Uh, yeah, so I'm just going up, going up... Probably uh, twenty two. <laughs> Just for a change. So that's above Edge of Tomorrow, <laughs> as always, and below Surrogates. The sweet spot. What are you talking about? We only added Surrogates last week. No, but so. we're always around Edge of Tomorrow, aren't we? And we always come back to the Edge of Tomorrow, like it, that's Edge of Tomorrow. Tomorrow. It is a bit of a waterfall <laughs> that one. Yeah, um, um, Alex. Um, I'm happy with that, but I would probably say just below Independence Day, above Phantom Menace. Right, okay. I'd say 32. <laughs> no, no, Below way. Prometheus. Rubbish. No. And above no. Divergent. No, no, it's no. It's a good, feel yeah. good film. Yeah. It's I don't nothing want a feel good film. It. There's nothing shitty in it, and there's nothing. Yeah, there is. Everything. It's a reasonable science fiction premise as well. It's a solid premise, used well. Yeah. But it, you know, it's not used well though. It's used in the most r- predictable of ways. You both just told me it's, it's a predictable boxing film. But it's a robot robot predictable in it. boxing film. That's yeah, but that doesn't, still... make, doesn't make mean it gets a pass. It's still a predictable film. It's no, just, I don't think it. I, I don't think there's any sort of. I think the story ticks along well. It's well mm. told. It, it doesn't yep. look well told. It's terrible. It's good acting. It's Everyone also, in it is solid. It's, the kid's terrible. 
Yeah, but you. Yeah, the Russian girl. The Russian woman's terrible. Oh, she she's not really got much to go on, has she? Really. <laughs> To be honest, no. but well, yeah. there's another problem with it. All the characters are paper thin, except for the lead three. I don't have a problem with that. The though. fact that his mum's dead is just completely just. There's nothing like one throwaway scene when they mention it for like two seconds, but like it, it, she's just died. That kid would probably be a bit more upset about the, you know, the mum that raised him through his whole life, and then his dad turns up at eleven and goes, oh, "I'm into boxing." He's like, "Oh, sweet." <laughs> would you? Have, you wouldn't have preferred it though if he was more emotional. Totes of mush. Well, well, I'd have believed it a little bit more, like if he was a bit sort of upset about it, or a bit sort of like, well, you know, I'm not just going to get into this. Oh, and also, that kid, what, how is he reprogramming <laughs> robots? Computer games, he, he says. Oh, that's it, kid. computer games, computer games. <laughs> and he also knows Xbox every boxing match that ever happened. Yeah. He's got the Xbox <laughs> 720, he knows it. He knows. But he's also that's... really, really violent. <laughs> yeah. I don't that's understand the, what he's doing. I don't, I just yeah. don't understand. <laughs> But see, that is quite realistic Ooh. how uh, Hugh Jackman burns through two robots within, what, like 10 minutes of that film? He's destroyed Ambush and he's destroyed Noisy Boy because he's so cocky and yeah, ridiculous. He's just a, but he's just an he's idiot, but that's, quite, that's but that's better, that's more realistic than that it's just no, they find that it's... one robot and it's just that one robot all the way through rising up the ranks. But that's why I want to root for him. Like, if you go back to the rest again, in the rest of Mickey Rourke, he's kind of wrecked. And he's not cocky about it, is he? He's, he's ruined. Whereas this yeah. guy, he's done everything wrong, but he's still like trying to sell his son, and yeah, but he's a I think that makes piece of shit. I don't think he don't think he really redeems himself by the end of the film, however. I don't think he, I just don't no, think not really buy the characters at all. Enough. He takes a kid <laughs> under his wing. Yeah, yeah. Come on, it's not right at the bottom. Like I, I completely agree. With Chris. It's well made. Right. It's competently what about made. It's good. What's that? A, a, a one above Ender's Game, so hate Ender's Game. <laughs> well, come on, know. compared to Flash Gordon and all that shit. Yeah, and Spaceballs, come on now. I, at least, I enjoyed Flash Gordon. At least Gordon. around bad, Hunger but I enjoyed Games. It. Below Hunger Games. Uh, below Inner Space, then. Because Inner Space is a, it, Inner Space is a way better Inner film space, No, Inner, it is. Inner Space no, is not. an incompetent mess. It's, it doesn't make it's any mental. sense. <laughs> it doesn't know, Inner Space doesn't know what it is. This knows what it is. This yeah, is completely yeah, really knows film. what it is. Yeah, but, but what it knows is is terrible. Like it knows, no. it's just mundane and mediocre and boring. No, inner no. space is just randomly things thrown on a bit of like they're just throwing stuff at the screen to make it work. This is well made, is well paced, it's well plotted. There's a good enough bit. Of, yeah, there's solid action in it. I don't think it's well paced at all. I think it's really boring. Action in it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> underneath Hunger Games. <laughs> oh, all right, I'm not happy about brought- it, but. You've brought us down, so, you know. I have brought you down. Okay, it's going in. I'll have to take it. Boo. Um, <sighs> cool, that was hard work. <laughs> I'll take this moment to say, uh, science fiction rating system at gmail.com, Twitter at SF rating system. Get in touch if you hate Real Steel. Or love Real Steel and children. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, if you're either of those people, don't bother. Suggest some <laughs> kids' films for us to watch. <laughs> also, let me just put the record straight here. I don't, I don't hate children. <laughs> like... I quite enjoyed Stranger Things. The kids in that are all right. Yeah. Um, I like Rushmore. He's fifteen in that. That's, that's a kid. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you know, I, true. I just like annoying that. kids. He didn't scream. I think well, that's, that's it. I don't like. That's the thing. I don't like screaming kids, annoying kids, cocky kids. I don't like um, the sixth sense child. Maybe kids like stuff. you weren't. Do you know what I mean? As a kid, I think we may I have to do. <laughs> Might have to do three children's sci fi films at some point. <laughs> and that's get that's this. the week I have a rest. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting a guest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, it, it's in there, real steel, at number 24. Just think about what you're doing. But anyway, um, we'll move on for another break and come back with our third film, Pacific Rim. With our third and final film of the day, also our biggest robots of the day. Huge. It's Pacific Rim. They're massive. From 2013, directed 
produced and written by Guillermo del Toro from a story by Travis Beecham, who um, I don't really know anything about. He did. He did Clash of the Titans. So again, this is not quality. Makes sense. Sadly, <laughs> but, but it's all no, no, no. But if you have a film by Guillermo del Toro, it's his film. It's not anyone else's film. I'm sorry, Travis Beecham. I'm sure. Well, no, I know what he said. He said he was on the beach, and he saw. He looked out to sea, and he just imagined an image of a giant robot coming towards him, and that's when the seed of the idea came. But I would say that's all. Was he, he on had. drugs? Maybe he was on drugs. Oh, who knows? Who knows about these LA, LA types? I don't know. LA types, yeah. Well, yeah. Chris knows about them. Chris, yeah. was Travis Beecham on drugs? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, who's not started? Alex hasn't started. Alex, Pacific Rim, you, you said last episode you saw it in the IMAX and you liked yes. it. You saw it yes. again for the podcast. Yes. And I liked it even more. I fucking love this film. I think it's brilliant. I think... Wow. It does everything. I think it does everything right. I think the opening of this film is spectacular. I don't think there's anything that, however long it is, five minutes, where it explains the whole universe using like found footage, using news reports, using that kind of crazy That's all TV needed, game that. show. Uh, completely. Okay. I'm with all you. Right. I love that first five minutes as well. And Chris, I'm with you. That's all I needed. <laughs> right. Well, you're wrong. The rest of it is brilliant as well. The rest of it is brilliant as well. It just it's it just gives you exactly what you want. There's well, uh, my one okay, I'll want. start with, I'll start with my one problem is uh, the two chrono uh, what's it chrono alpha and the other one chrono uh, Cherno alpha yeah. and crimson typhoon get destroyed way too quick. I was yes. annoyed by how quickly they get destroyed. Yeah. Uh, you do not see enough of them fighting because what you want is to see them fighting. Yeah. But that aside, Agreed. the fights are amazing. They looked I personally thought they looked better on my telly, my in HD on Blu-ray. I mean it looked good on the IMAX, but you're just where you don't know where to look with IMAX sometimes it's too confusing. Yeah. Do you um, not think it's too dark often? No. No. Not at all. No, I think it looked my TV. I was watching it in the dark, so maybe you know, I don't know. Maybe it just looked really great on my telly. I, good, it I seemed all right to me. Yeah, yeah. Like but it. I, I like all of that stuff is brilliant. All the kaiju stuff is brilliant, and I think the concept of drifting, the concept of the left and the right hemispheres, the two pilots. I love that concept, and what he <laughs> having kind of a love story, but not really. It's not really a love story, but they fall in love through sharing their experiences. I think it's. It's a really good plot device. It's a really good character way of expanding characters. Um, and I think it makes sense, you know, dare I say it, scientifically, it makes sense that I that would be the way they would... Re- oh, that okay. bit of it. But you don't think it makes sense to have, like, a left and a right? No, that, the whole no, not sort at all. of bullshit of, like, it overloads one brain, so plug two in. It's Why? just rubbish. It, 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 that feels to me like a conceit to get a love story into the film. That's all it is. And also to have two people working yeah, together in can the machine talk. and not yeah. just be like a Tony Stark thing. In a... Yeah, totally. And so they can comment on what's going on and talk and yeah. have a reaction. And then you can yeah. get some sass talk going in. Going exactly, on. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't buy it at all. The thing I was thinking was like, what happens when they first go in together and they drift and it almost blows up? Surely that's all that would ever happen because as soon as anything went wrong... Everyone would panic, wouldn't they, a bit? And you would never get a like a cohesive sort of robot moving with two people doing it. I mean, anyone who's played any sort of co-op game knows that Does it, it doesn't work. I don't understand how, like... Because they're both, like... They're all, like, pinned in. Like, yeah. Mm. Are they... You, you, do you have to work together to move the things? No, they're, well, they're, like, the left and... Well, yeah, sometimes... Well, that, yeah, sometimes they seem to both move. Sometimes they're moving one arm or the other arm. Yeah, but no, just, right. it's just stupid. Um, the way I thought it worked is that they are literally they have become one mind, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't like that bit either. I thought it was stupid. Um, well, I think it works. And really the well. whole like, the whole like <laughs> conceit of so they're fighting the monsters, right? Kaiju's, please. Yeah. Yes. And <laughs> and <laughs> and then at some point, all of the worlds like. Uh, politicians just decide go fuck this <laughs> literally they're getting bigger so literally fuck this but it's we're just going to build all the rich war. people it's, no, but it's stupid no it's like, no it's completely it, no, it's Chris, like, you're wrong it's the only things explained. which are having any effect we're going to close them down 
But it's because of the rich people. All the rich people are safe. They completely explain it. The wall is just to pacify yeah. the general populace. They all the rich people have right. gone off somewhere to places to live forever. They don't yeah, care. Europe. Well, yeah. probably Europe. Yeah, where where you don't need where you don't get um yeah where you don't get any. Uh, Wait right until <laughs> Atlantic <laughs> Rim happens. And then, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's fucked. Yeah. Yeah, so no, yeah. that's explained. I mean, it, it's yeah, it seems silly, but it's it, they know that the end of the world's coming, kind of thing. So they're all in a bunker somewhere drinking mojitos, you know, smoking cigars. Yeah, mm. yeah, I get that. I think they should have um, they should have revealed that that they knew what the drift was and what it was doing, and that the they were coming through basically to colonize the Earth. It would have made more sense if the if the people who'd run off were like, well, we know. Oh. We know it only ends one way, you know, in them coming through and destroying us. So we what? So like Hannibal Chow, like it's all Hannibal Chow's fault, kind of thing, or that someone there's more of a government thing saying. Yeah, so you know, like when before. Charlie Day yeah. goes and like yeah. links in with the thing and yeah. becomes aware of what the plan is. Yeah, I, I, I think it would work better if he if he was like a defector or something, and he knew that from working with the people. So that's why the program shut down because yeah. they go, oh shit, if this is the plan. What's the point? We're out of here. Shut it down. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, but that's a little a small problem. There's some with, strange with, characters with, and casting going on. Yeah, there are. I, I, that's that's the most Del Toro bit about it for me, and I can appreciate that. Like, I like the fact Charlie Day's in it, yeah, yeah. Um, and the guy who the, um, the guy from Herman. Game of Thrones stuff. Yeah, who's with him? Yeah. Um, I think you know, just I like that kind of you know ensemble weird sort of cast. So that's yeah. what Independence Day got right in a way, wasn't it? Having data in yeah, there. Yeah, and there's not really uh, any massive famous people in this film, which is really good. Which no. makes the robots and the monsters there what it's about. He isn't put in fucking Tom Cruise or someone like that, which just distracts. Yeah, you but the in. only problem with that is though that the the main guy Charlie Hunnam is awful. That I, I don't think he carries it at all. The role He's was just... initially offered to Tom Cruise. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, yeah, and he, he okay. took um, what was the film he took instead. Was it, was it edge? the Edge of Tomorrow, yeah. I think it was Edge of oh. Tomorrow, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. I, I, yeah, the guy's not great, but I don't think he's he's a sci-fi. I don't think he really matters, to be honest. He's not what I was watching it for. Yeah. See, my problem with it is, like, I, there are all these other problems as well. Everything you said, Chris, I agree with you completely. My overriding problem with the film is just that it's just so boring. Not much really happens. And well, it's such a... I don't understand why you can't make a film that's robots versus monsters, right? And you have have half an hour at the start where you build up to it. Oh, we've got monsters, we've got robots, but then after that, you just fight. Like I, I don't, it, it works. <laughs> I, that would work. It works in Japan. It works with 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 those of the films. You don't yeah. need a love story. You don't need to come come just back out fight. of it and spend ages and ages talking about feelings and Harry Giselle has got a nosebleed. You don't need any of this. You've got, you've already got the greatest of conceits. You've got these huge fucking robots and these huge fucking monsters. Yeah. So all when they're not on screen, all I'm thinking is, please put them back on the screen because I don't care about any all of these I'm characters. I'm thinking I don't is care though, about like, budgetary <clears throat> in a budget issue. It's very expensively stacked on totally. That sort of so stuff, right. So the so the other way to do it then is like Starship Troopers, right? Yeah. That doesn't have bugs all the way through, does it? No. Does it, it does a good job of cutting back that to it is and the having perfect those example of how to use how to effects. do it? Yeah, and having like little TV shots of like stuff yeah. happening mm. to keep you engaged, mm. and of having you know there's, a, there's more of a because they're trainees there's more of a thing coming, like a more of a story there. And of course I know these guys come back in training, but hanging the whole thing on this um, as you even said like a non romance between those cute two characters yeah. and the fact that Idris Elba's dying and used to be great, you know, it just didn't. It seemed like the afterthought that I think it is. You know what I mean? Like it seemed as though Guillermo del Toro agreed in me and thought, "I want to see a film with robots versus monsters." And then he thought, "Hang on a minute, we need something else in there. What else can we do?" Mm. I don't agree at all. No, 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 I don't agree at all. I think it's about. Wrong man, wrong yeah, man. he's always good though. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that Ron Perlman bit was good as well. I like the idea of them saying, "You know the that the weird monster. like yeah. English guy who's like the scientist." That's yeah, very mm. weird. What the fuck's that about? Well, that's what I was saying. He's kind oh. of a classic sort of character, you know. Yeah, him, him right. and Charlie like Day are both caricature. That very caricature, isn't it? Yeah, um, well, I think it works. Uh, they've got their own little arc, haven't they? Though him and, yeah. and Charlie. But, I, just, um, I like seeing Charlie Day in, in a big film as well, which is quite exciting. <laughs> it was quite. Uh, he was good, but um, it looks so, like uh, Power Rangers. No, at one point where because that's essentially what it is. Well. Well, I will tell you this. 
and I know I'm not going to win you round, but every one of the kaiju that was created yeah. was created from a standpoint that it it could be a person in a suit. So the physical yes, dynamics and of it did them look like it can be, point, yeah, yeah. And so that is an ode to those films. That is him saying like that oh, is yeah. him I'm not, homaging that. I'm not you know. dissing the, the kaiju incredible. I like all the robot designs as well. Really, I think all of them except I like um, how they're all like different cultures. Like there's yeah. one from like Russia and although, like Alex said. The fact they're so stereotyped and killed instantly is like no, <laughs> that is like, kind of super annoying. No, <laughs> it's so yeah. pointless. Like you need like your first like act the Australian to be ones have them going around the world kicking ass, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, this was it was an hour of material cut from the film, but the other it? stuff was character stuff, so probably better than it was cut out. It, for it, you. it was already too long. <laughs> it's well over two hours, wasn't it? Yeah, mm. I think if this was a ninety-minute film, it'd be a lot better. To be honest with you, yeah. Like, I I didn't have a problem with the length. I didn't. I think the pacing was fine. I didn't have a problem with you only the gaps see, show, between. You only need to show Idris Elba and um, Rinko, I forgot her name, the Japanese yeah. actress. You only need to show them having a heart to heart once, not ten times. Mm. Yeah, you know, they're just padding, 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 padding. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, and again, like I said last week, the problem with me is that like this should be. <laughs> My favourite film ever. I love giant robots. I love giant monsters. I, I hate that Japan can't afford to make a better version of it. Like even <laughs> even Shin Godzilla, it still is a shitty man in a suit and it still looks crap. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's just not. Just doesn't do it for me at all, unfortunately. And I don't the, only, the, fight the is very, opening section is great, though, isn't it? Like that the, is great. Yeah. And also the the, the fight they have in the daytime. That's better. That's the yeah. last one, isn't it? I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the bit where he yeah, drags the ship along the dark. floor. Yeah. Yeah, it's not all but, dark. But, it's not all brooding. It's not all like, oh my god, like yeah, there's emotion, but it's not like this kind of gritty transform. Even Transformers, like you know, like, it's like uh, the military uh, war. It's not yeah. like that at all. Oh, I don't mean, it's, I don't mean like, um, like, no, I don't mean totally dark. I mean literally, mm. the, the fights were dark. Like it was always raining, and the sea was mm. dark, and it looked a bit dark mm. to me. Just, there I was always he, a glowing bit on the monster, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, I think he did. Uh, I think he didn't want to do it in 3D, and then he bowed down to studio pressure and changed it. Because in the thing when they said, "Why did you change your mind?" He's just like, "Oh, I changed my mind. I'm not a politician. I don't have to stick to what I say." Like, you know, sorry. And I think maybe, I wonder you know, how was, many films. Well, yeah, it was shot in oh, red. It was shot on a 3D rig. So yeah, but that, but he must have been aware of it then. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but isn't that why the colour balance is funny? Because yeah. they're always dark, aren't they, in 3D? Yeah. Like, there's yeah. a whole generation of films there that are ruined by the colour balance being yeah. off because they're done for, like, um, the fourth Pirates of the Caribbean, which looks like you're watching it through a pair of dark glasses because it's so yeah. made for 3D. Um, mm. Which, thankfully, seems to be over now, doesn't it? I think. Um, yeah, they've, they've sorted it out. It works well, out. It's just like 3D now is just done as a, an extra, like, a bit of. Uh, paraphernalia to sell the film isn't it I, I think there's yeah. one film out this year shot in 3D do you know what it is no what? it's the new Transformers that was shot in IMAX 3D <laughs> which makes sense doesn't it because that's a big yeah. spectacle but I think everything yeah. else wasn't shot in um, mm. in 3D I can't remember the yeah. last film a 3D film I went to see I can't remember it <sighs> I always go and I always look for the 2D version 2D of it, yeah though, they're much easier to get now aren't they which is good it's Alien yeah. Covenant out in 3D no it's not no not at all no because right. Prometheus was wasn't it I think I saw Prometheus yeah I saw Prometheus in 3D yeah I think I did mm. yeah no I think probably the second Avengers film was the last film I saw in 3D mm. um, I mean the problem with 3D I know we're off on a tangent here is that really Avatar is still the best example of that yeah. happening isn't it there's nothing yeah. Dread actually is quite I think Dread's a yeah. 3D thing but other than those two nothing ever since really played you know there's uh, one of the Final Destination films in 3D that works really well because just stuff coming out yeah, all I've the heard time that. and it's good fun. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Piranha 3 Double D. <laughs> yes, is. I've seen that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got that in fact. Um, <laughs> that's not a good film. I bet you have. <laughs> <laughs> that comes with a pair of like, old-fashioned uh, blue-red 3D glasses in the box. That does for, for Piranha 3 Double D. Oh, great! Uh, yeah. Um, well, I know you both say you hate this film, or just what you're going for. But no, William I enjoyed Gib- it. I did enjoy uh, it. Oh, okay. Oh, good. I'm glad. Oh, I thought I you'd mean, be. The premise was mental, but uh, oh, so you good. did actually enjoy it, Chris? Then I did yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, I had a good time. Oh, okay. It was. It was. Um, there was plenty to see. Yeah. I'm not sure, but you know, it's kind of like the Transformers ones. There's plenty to see for one one go. Yeah. Um, well. Yeah, 
but you know, I still I probably would watch it again because there, there's you know there's enough going on there. There's more, there's better characters and better interaction than there is on Transformers. Um, yeah, and there's a higher caliber of cast as well. Yeah, um, and yeah. I'll say um, watching it in 4K as I did this time. Mm. Uh, there's a, the mm. detail in the robots is lovely. Like it does look, it does look nice when they're not. Can you get dark. 4K on Pirate? No, I didn't watch it on Pirate. <laughs> I think you can, but I imagine the file size would be absolutely <laughs> it'd ginormous. Be, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. it'd probably be quick, it'd probably be cheaper to go out and buy it than to like <laughs> pay for yeah. the internet to download it. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, no, it did look good. Um, let's rate it. I'm going in with 19 above Independence Day and below Rise of the Planet of the Apes. It's not above Independence Day. <laughs> okay, Chris, no. where is it? It is. Um, 22 by any chance 21 above so it's below Star Wars episode 1 yes, yes and Alex 11 11 yep fuck Wally oh. I'm bored after oh, last week this whole real. thing about Wally no <laughs> I know I love this film I think I think it completely works it gave me what I wanted to give it's better this time and I think it's better than Wally definitely <laughs> I think it just it does exactly what you know. Until we come around to doing Godzilla's, this is this is where you know this is where Godzilla's will get. Is, but it's just like a fanboy film, though, isn't it? Compared to some of these films on here, like well, no, because I'm a fanboy just... of this sort of stuff. It didn't work for me on that level either. Yeah, that's yeah, I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do I do think it's better than Wally. I agree with you, but I don't think it's better than a lot of films underneath that. Um, <laughs> so where did you so where did you say above Independence Day? I mean, I guess I could take above District 9 and below They Live. I could watch Independence Day hundreds of times compared to this. <laughs> we know. Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, well, um, I'll take that then, as I'm not going to get... I'm not What you just said, below They Live, I'll take above that. Above District 9. Chris, are you happy yeah. with that? Yeah, I'll take that. Okay, cool. That's a, that's a compromise. It's not better than They Live. Come on. Uh, I like it. Put on the glasses, Alex. Put them on. <laughs> I'm not going to put on the glasses we have to put them on <laughs> I'm not putting on the glasses i got a family man <laughs> I don't need this <laughs> was Keith no Keith David wasn't in one of these films was he oh no, he wasn't. Not gonna... no come on now <laughs> was, that Arma... was that Armageddon I saw yes. Keith David recently was it wasn't Armageddon? He, in... yes. he was in Armageddon wasn't he yeah yeah, Isn't there a bit in Transformers where some the fat guy some fat guy says this is like Armageddon? Yes, yeah, yeah. When all the as and is he referring to the film or is he referring to the biblical event? Uh probably the big biblical event. Mm, it's what I remember. Yeah. <laughs> I'm <be> so sure. <laughs> Maybe in the second one when those like street transformers come up, did someone go, This is like Bad Boys Two? Because then you'd know Maybe. that's definitely what was yeah. going on. Maybe that's who those two racist Transformers are based on. Yeah, I think yeah. There is it there is one episode of the Transformers where they a film of Transformers where they turn they go really Armageddon, they like have they take over NASA again. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And they shoot they shoot a lot at NASA. He for some that. reason, the only way the the uh, Transformers can get into space is to hitch a ride on a space shuttle. What? Like, <laughs> we come from space. Yeah, despite <laughs> the space being shuttle able being to transform into space shuttles. Yeah, yeah, and they are highly advanced. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I, I do wonder, right, whether the, there's been some ideas floated recently about a uh, a SFROS field trip, and I wonder whether a ten hour <laughs> Transformers hell, <laughs> like watching every Transformers film back oh to back. Like to go with no. I think the only they way that incredible. can work. I think the only way it's going to work is if we really choose films that we love. Yeah, that's the only way it's going to work. What the field trip? Yeah. Okay, staff meeting. This goes off air. But get no, other no, people first. They, they love all this shit. <laughs> um, the, yeah, it's got to be. <laughs> it's got to be. Uh, Literally, we need to come fully loaded with our favourite. Oh, yeah, but, but also, we shouldn't Whoa. tell each other what film we're bringing. Yes, oh, God. Yes. And just turn up with the film. Mystery yeah, yeah. film. <laughs> and and, and bring, bring some sort of food and drink related to that film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is fantastic. This sounds fantastic. And you know what we should do? We should, um, for the preview show, we should all, all separately record like a little 10 minute block where we preview our film without the other ones knowing it. So everyone at home knows what they are, but we oh. don't know what they are. How are you yeah, going to edit yeah. it, though? 
Yeah, and then we, and then we and then we record the reveal live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We could we could broadcast it, and we couldn't because yeah. it'd be in, in a undisclosed place off the grid, so we couldn't. Yeah, but, uh... yeah. <laughs> anyway, this yeah. is all for the so, future. So, so, uh... yeah, so all the fans don't come down and start <laughs> just mucking up, filling up the roads. That's it. Yeah. Hashtagging us from outside. Hashtag let us in. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's all for the future of um, science fiction rating system. So stay tuned, and uh, we're off. Share. You got to share this. Like send share, us. like, follow, subscribe. Just it on your Facebook. Send us your emails and stuff. Everyone, send them. Everyone needs to get one of their friends to get involved. Like a pyramid scheme. Yes. Think yeah. Of this but like nice. a pyramid scheme with absolutely zero chance of making money. But yeah. you will make yourself famous because if you can prove you've got somebody else to listen to it, mm. we would we would we'll say your name on air. Very good. Yeah, and if you give us a five star rating on iTunes, yeah, um, you got any more vouchers to hold? Send us an email and we'll read your email. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter what's it what it is. Like literally, this is this is free airtime. If you can get if you can get ten. <laughs> Uh, recommendations oh you'll get a a, a personalised e-card <laughs> it's turned into like a um, yeah. like like one of those like uh, what's it pages which is trying to crowdfund this now yeah yeah uh, 25 uh, <laughs> have you had any vouchers come through the post or anything recently? I have got some more yeah. cardio vouchers so that yeah. is that and I'll say so the grand one is that if you get to 100 100 recommendations uh, you can come to the next field trip yeah uh, we'll come around your house and do this but you can't write anything or come in, come inside. You just like or talk. Wet outside and watch us <laughs> through the glass. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so there's all some reasons to get involved, and you can get involved at on Twitter, Chris. Uh, at Chris Redding. No, the, no, no. I was from your dynamic, the one for the film, the one for us. At SF rating. SF, no. re, SF rating <laughs> system. system. Yeah. yeah. On Instagram. Alex. Uh, SF rating system or is it SFRS? No, I don't know these. <laughs> no, it's a it's science fiction rating system. You don't have to know that shit now. You can just put in, like... Yeah. That's true. Just search us everywhere. System. I think yeah. if, you, if you put into Google science fiction rating system... Let's we're number one. Up. Are we number Are we? one? I don't know. I'm hoping. <laughs> the random words. We're number one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it goes to our iTunes page. So subscribe, Woo! like, You're shitting follow. Me. Yeah, uh, and, and a news yeah, article, one. a news article from Love Horror joins the Science Fiction Rating System podcast. There you go. And underneath that, <laughs> annoyingly, is our broken original Google oh. <laughs> Sites website, <laughs> which is which is yeah. I need to get rid of that link. Yeah. I'm going to try okay. and get some mentions on some big other podcasts because well, I think you- that's going to push us right up. Oh, that fact that Tom was talking about that. So now I'll hand over to Chris to play the um, clip from Bumblebee. Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> last episode we discussed you yeah, Bumblebee yeah, to yeah, do uh, a little shout-out yeah, for uh, us. How's that going? The thing hey. is with Bumblebee, he, he's lost his voice. Uh, he's, he's actually got a voice in the later films. Radio chatter. Yeah, um, it's expensive. <laughs> 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 fair enough fair enough um, no stardust this week no stardust right yeah so maybe next week you'll get a little twinkle of that stardust but although for now, I have met Ron Perlman oh. he was in one of the films oh, today god <laughs> was he nice he was lovely <laughs> he was huge <laughs> right well thanks for that Chris um, twinkle twinkle stardust what's the theme of the next show oh yes before Sam. we go um, thanks Alex for worrying about that staying on message so next time um, this has been suggested by one of our fans um, who suggested it before her name's Lucy don't <laughs> anyone say who she is hi Lucy <coughs> hi, hi Lucy. Lucy big fan and um, have you got I was a boyfriend there. Lucy he has oh, she has he has yeah. I'll let a secret out there you know that uh... you know about her <laughs> I was I was moaning to her saying, watch a lot of shit films lately, need a new theme. And she said, What about the planet Mars? Ooh. The and so next planet. week we'll be going to the red planet itself of yeah. Mars. So if you've got any suggestions of red planet films, get in touch with us and join us next week on the preview show where we uh, watch the trailers and um, go reveal through the, the synopsis, films. reveal the films, yeah. Um, so until then, good night. Um, Stop making Cheerio. films with children in them, and we'll see you in a week. Transform and roll out. Hashtag not my transformers. <laughs> <laughs>
knew you were going to say that. Good, good night. <laughs>